that? What is that? Probably one of the most common calls that we get into the office is for a bloodshot, red, bloody eye. And so the patients are kind of scared a little bit because it looks pretty nasty. So I wanted to do a video explaining exactly what it is, why you might get it, and what can you actually do about it? Is there actually any treatment available for it? So let's focus in. Hey, howdy everybody, this is Dr. Neil Guyman, Dr. Eye Guy, and I do videos all about the eyes to help you with your eyes. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Now let's talk about a subconjunctival hemorrhage. The name for this bloodshot, red, bloody looking eye is called a subconjunctival hemorrhage, and it's exactly how it sounds. It's a broken blood vessel or a hemorrhage underneath the conjunctival layer of the eye. The white part of the eye is covered by this clear layer called the conjunctiva, and there's these tiny little fine blood vessels that run within that layer or just beneath that layer between the clear layer and the white part layer of the eye, the sclera. And if you happen to have one of these tiny blood vessels break, that blood will leak out in between the layers, and that's why you'll see this layer of blood right on the front surface of the eye around the white part of the eye. And this is exactly what happens with a bruise. In fact, you can think of this as an eye bruise. But yeah, the main reason that it looks so nasty, so gnarly, is because that top layer, that conjunctiva, is see-through, so you're actually seeing the thin blood spread around your eyes, and it looks really, really red because it's blood. Now, what are the possible causes for a subconjunctival hemorrhage? And I'll list these. The last one that I'll list is definitely the most popular, the most common reason why you might have a subconjunctival hemorrhage. One very obvious one would be trauma. If you actually get punched in the eye, it can actually break that blood vessel. Another one is any kind of sudden increased pressure that might pop that broken blood vessel. This can be from heavy coughing or sneezing. It could be lifting something really heavy where you have a lot of tension, like, like weight lifters will create all of a sudden crazy pressure and could pop that blood vessel. Constipation, if you're straining, while you're constipated, that can also pop a blood vessel. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> Hypertension or high blood pressure, that high blood pressure can increase the pressure on that blood vessel and pop the blood vessel. Bleeding disorders, or if you're on any blood thinners like warfarin or aspirin, this can cause that broken blood vessel to, to not seal up as fast and so you'll get a lot of blood that leaks out. Surgeries on the eye can definitely cause a hemorrhage. For example, LASIK, there's a certain part in LASIK where they'll actually kind of suction the eye up a little bit and that pressure can pop a blood vessel. Or if you have any other eye surgeries, if they ever are working on the eye and happen to pop or nick a blood vessel, that can definitely cause a hemorrhage for sure. Now the most common reason, at least in the textbooks, is idiopathic, meaning we have no idea why you have this subconjunctival hemorrhage. A lot of times patients will come in, well, they'll have this hemorrhage, and we'll try and rule everything out. We'll try and go through the list. Hey, you know, did you have constipation? Did you get hit in the eye? Are you on any blood thinners? And if everything's ruled out, a lot of times we're left with, well, you know, we don't know why you had this subconjunctival hemorrhage. It just happened and that's idiopathic. We have no idea why and it's definitely the most common reason, unfortunately. There's so many times where I tell a patient, you know, we, we don't know why you had this, but we'll watch it and see how it heals up. Now, is there anything you can actually do for a subconjunctival hemorrhage? Are there any treatments available? Unfortunately, not. This is where the magic word comes out and it's time. Usually a subconjunctival hemorrhage will resolve in about two to three weeks on average, and it will just resolve on its own. The eye will kind of reabsorb the blood and that broken blood vessel will heal up, and then you'll slowly see it get better and better with time. Now I do want to mention if you have a large hemorrhage that's covering a good portion of the eye, sometimes that can kind of elevate the conjunctiva and take up a little bit more space. And so as you're blinking, your eyelid will kind of feel that conjunctiva a little bit more and kind of be irritated a little bit. Sometimes they can actually be tender to the touch a little bit because it is a bruise. And so sometimes using artificial tears just to have an extra coating between the eyelid and that conjunctiva can help calm it down a little bit, maybe help it feel less irritated. So that's definitely an option that you can use artificial tears maybe four times a day just to kind of help the irritation. Now nine times out of 10, when a patient comes in worried about their subconjunctival hemorrhage, this is usually how the story goes. Either they would just gotten out of bed and then they looked at themselves in the mirror and whoa, whoa, my eye is really red and bloody, or they're going about their day and someone else mentions it to them and asks them, hey, what's wrong with your eye? Why is it so red? And so a lot of times patients don't really feel 
that they have a subconjunctival hemorrhage. It doesn't really cause pain or anything. And usually it hurts other people looking at their subconjunctival hemorrhage more than the patient that has the subconjunctival hemorrhage. Now I'm curious here, if you've ever had a subconjunctival hemorrhage or if you have one right now, what did you do? How long did it take for your hemorrhage to clear up? I'm just kind of curious. Leave it down in the comments and while you're down there, hit that like button if you're finding value from this video. Now a few common questions that people ask me if they have a subconjunctival hemorrhage, should they still go in to see their eye doctor? The answer is yes. You just want to make sure that you rule out any other possibilities that could have caused this subconjunctival hemorrhage. Usually I'll look everywhere around the eye. I'll even look on the inside of the eye, checking for any type of other signs, maybe bleeding disorders. I'll check the retina out, the retinal vessels just to kind of rule out any other possible rare causes for this subconjunctival hemorrhage. If you are on blood thinner medication, should you stop the medication to help this hemorrhage heal up? The answer is no. Definitely talk to your primary care provider before even considering stopping the blood thinner medication because usually the blood thinner medication is helping everything else out and the subconjunctival hemorrhage is kind of low on the list. And so talk with your primary care provider first but usually the answer is going to be no, and it should heal up even if you are on this blood thinner. Another common question is after a few days of having this subconjunctival hemorrhage, sometimes it can actually look worse, and so patients kind of get a little bit scared. Is this something to worry about? The answer is no. If you've already been checked out by your eye doctor and you know it's a subconjunctival hemorrhage, it usually does start to look worse before it gets better. Where you have that popped or broken blood vessel, that blood will leak, and as it gets better or starts to absorb, the blood will kind of spread out between those layers, and sometimes it will actually spread out and sometimes fall down just with gravity to the bottom of the eye, and so it'll look like the, the hemorrhage is spreading out towards the eye, but it is spreading, but it's also getting thinner and getting ready to be absorbed by the eye. So yeah, it's normal for it to start to look worse before it gets better. Now, when should you actually be concerned about a subconjunctival hemorrhage? And usually I tell patients that if it's reoccurring, meaning if you get a broken blood vessel and it clears up and then all of a sudden you get it again and it's probably in the same spot, clears up and you're getting it again. If it's reoccurring, that's when you probably should be a little bit concerned that maybe you do have a bleeding disorder or you have something that might be causing this broken blood vessel, this hemorrhage that's causing this bruise on the eye. And so that's something that you definitely want to start to investigate further. You might want to go to your primary care provider, start having maybe blood work or blood testing done just to rule out anything that might be causing reoccurring subconjunctival hemorrhages. Hey, thanks for watching the whole video. I'm Dr. Neil Guyman, Dr. Eye Guy, focusing on you and your eyes. Stay focused. Make sure you check out my other videos right there and I'll see you in the next video.